What's up, everybody? I was sent an article that is so interesting, I had to make a quick video about it. Um, this is coming from Built in LA. And if you don't know, it's a great job forum slash site to find jobs in startups. So um, I was sent an article by Ellen Glover about AI influencers. And I've been thinking a lot about this. So I thought it'd be a really fun article to go through. I guess the question we're really looking to answer here is AI influencers are here, but will it ruin content creation? And are AI and computer generated influencers truly taking over social media? And is that something that we want to happen? Because it's it's pretty complicated and it's it's kind of a complex issue. So let's just jump right into the article, which is pretty interesting. Um, Let's get into it. Influencers have commanded social media for years, setting trends and guiding their followers shopping habits with the content that they post. And ultimately, it's forged an industry industry worth $20 billion. And the landscape is evolving quickly amid the rise of a new player, the AI influencer. And I've seen these guys. They, they do like first person content creation. They're on TikTok. I've seen them on Instagram. Um, I, I have seen AI generated content on YouTube, but I haven't really seen the persona, uh, the influencer really take off there yet, but I'm sure it's happening, just not in my niche. Um, so what are AI influencers? They're known as virtual influencers. They're computer-generated characters that actually promote products on social media. And I'm wondering right now, are they going to be held to the same sort of ad policies as us if they were created by businesses? Or is this just a new tactic for guerrilla marketing? Um, anyway, back to the article. Often created with CGI, motion capture, and artificial intelligence, these digital personas are designed to behave the way a human influencer would online, um, and that means offering brand unique ways to connect with consumers. So I guess it might just be another guerrilla marketing tactic, but I do think the application extends well beyond that. Among the most popular AI influencers, the article goes on to say, is little Michaela. I, I think I'm saying that. Michaela? Michaela? Who has appeared in ads for fashion companies like Chanel? What? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, Givenchy? Givenchy. Um, who champions progressive politics uh, when she's not busy discussing what it's like being a young robot living in Los Angeles. That is nuts, okay? Another is Lou of Magalu, a creation of Brazil big box retailer magazine Luisa, a partner of prominent brands like Adidas, Samsung, um, and even runs her own YouTube channel. I knew it. Okay, all right. I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> we're learning new stuff every day. This is blurring the lines between the real and the virtual worlds as these AI influencers are transforming the way that content is being consumed and marketed. With millions of followers engaging with their content, the purchasing products they promote, they are innovative tools that brands can use to better connect with audiences in increasingly saturated social media markets. I mean, you really are looking for anything to, to break out of the noise, right? The static that is all of these businesses and, you know, companies employing influencers, right? But they're not just selling brands. They are really selling their brand. They are self-branded AI, just like you, me, or anyone else in the content space. It says here they actually interact with the world from a first-person perspective. They post selfies, they dance, they attend events, and they opine on current events. Uh, like we were just talking about, one AI talks about politics when they're not too busy worried about being a robot in LA. They even engage in public squabbles with each other. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, they have their own music, their own podcasts. Um, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe look at um, a few influencers after this. Look at this little blurb about the benefits of AI. Influencers are blending the cutting edge technology with interesting new story methods. Okay. Um, this is making influencer marketing a more customizable, creative, and cost-effective option. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, totally. It's just like uh, paying for an ad one time, right, I imagine, compared to that of hiring an employee that puts out content constantly. Um, much bigger of an endeavor and, and more costly for sure. I don't know who that has a benefit for. Um, not the consumer, I can almost guarantee you. Honestly, I really don't care much about the brands. I'm more concerned with how we interact with them as consumers, as people. And when I say that, I just mean to say that a lot of people are utilizing them and a lot of people have access to the technology to make them now. According to recent statistics, more than 1 billion photos are posted on Instagram every day and more than 270 videos are posted on TikTok every second. 
Let that sink in. And for brands that are looking to promote their products on these platforms, standing out is a matter of survival and partnering with AI influencers is one way of doing that. I'm going to go ahead and push back about against that now just because if it is an AI influencer, you do need to disclose it on TikTok and stuff. But I don't think anyone is gravitating towards a product inherently because it's using an AI influencer unless the product itself is AI influencers. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think there is still a huge societal appeal to having a human uh, being in the face of just about anything we're, we're talking about as it relates to consumer-based products. Again, I think that is dramatically different if your company is that of a tech company of some sort. But the article does go on to say that brands do need to think outside of the box and how they connect with customers, going on to say that these influencers are fulfilling this need uh, to kind of create that connection with the customer in different ways. So, I mean, I, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I just disagree with that sentiment as a consumer. Here are some drawbacks of AI influencers, though. Most marketing experts say that social media users crave authenticity. And that's what I'm saying. You, um, How you define authentic is up for debate, but the ultra-curated, picture-perfect world of these virtual characters don't appear to be it. That's what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, the obvious artificiality of AI influencers can have several ne negative and ethical societal drawbacks. I mean, absolutely. This is like looking at, you know, magazines again and, and saying like, oh, that's the ideal. And it's like, no, that's an unachievable ideal. Um, and this is just going to make that worse. It's going to grow into something that might not be great. <laughs> Which brings us to the lack of human experience. Young, young consumers use social media more as a search engine than a place to merely connect with each other. I do too. That's what I'm saying, man. I TikTok things often. And, and by that, I just mean like I ask a question into the search. Um, and it's actually really impressive with the amount of information and relevant information that does that yields from it. So um, input from AI influencers back to the article, guys. Um, algamations of pixels and code that have no real understanding of what it means to be alive or stake in current events can come off as disingenuous and shallow. After all, what does AI-generated cartoon promoting makeup possibly know about skincare? They have no epidermis. Like, that's what I'm saying, right? There's no epidermis for them to, to experience. How, how would they know except they're giving that data, that info um, that they need to know, which is obviously altered and, and inputted by humans. So um, how could digital fabrication of a black person fully grasp the meaning of Black Lives Matter? I Listen, I, that it's really complicated stuff, right? Yeah, living as a human is very hard to replicate. You just cannot do that without the experience. Anything other than that is just an artificial experience. You're an ad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, your existence is an ad. Um, it, it does make it harder for consumers to trust. Um, this article points out that virtual influencers like Shudu um, and Rosie make it very clear on their social media platforms that they are, in fact, digital. Yet yeah, both of them have been mistaken for real people before. You know, not everybody is very media literate, especially as we're kind of going into this new era um, of, of kind of what it, it's changing, what it means to be literate in media. It's no longer what we already struggled with, right? Deciphering what is a real um, source, what is a, you know, not an unbiased source, which rarely exists, but being able to identify the bias of the source um, it's gone way beyond that um, as far as meaning digital literacy. Um, it's also becoming mandatory uh, to label these AIs because of the lack of media literacy um, here in the States, at least. Uh, the EU also is, is on board with this. An AI Act and the U.S. President Biden's executive order on AI both mandate clear disclosure of AI-generated content and social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram have begun requiring that all AI-generated content be labeled as such. And they have created tools to help creators identify AI-created content. It may objectify women and people of color like no shit Sherlock. Most top AI influencers today are fair-skinned, white, young, thin, and female. But it is sickening that, you know, companies have already commodified black culture and then repurposed it to sell things. And this is another example of that, how we are leveraging technology um, to commodify a culture. It's not great. I don't like this much at all. Um, we're not going to go into how they work. It's pretty obvious how they work. They 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 work well, um, it seemingly, and I, I think it's going to boost in its visibility soon and probably desire to see them from a consumer perspective. Because if you think about it, the more that we do uh, see them, the more that we become desensitized uh, to digital forms of influencing. And that's what we're seeing here. So let's check out a few of the most popular AI influencers on the market today, you guys. This is little Michaela. 
Yeah, that's that's her. That's little Michaela uh, with 2.6 million views on Instagram and 3.5 million on TikTok. Uh, Michaela Sousa, a.k.a. Lil Michaela, is one of the most popular virtual influencers. So it looks like she was created in 2016. So she's really the trend maker here. <laughs> 19 year old living in L.A. OK. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I totally remember seeing her. Blah, blah, blah. So they just make AI generated content. OK, very cool. Very cool. Averaging a hundred thousand minimum per per post. Um, this who is this? Lou of Magula. Okay, this is Lou of Magula. All right, this is Brazil's most followed social media influencer and has one of the fastest growing TikToks. So let's check that out, shall we? Um, Magula, you can find her here. Seven point three million followers. Wait, she has a dog. Oh no, that's just selling products. So it looks like we have a real person involved here. No, um, view count much lower though. I mean, this was like. Pretty low for 7 million viewers. I think a view bot might be happening. Like a follow bot. Yeah, we're not doing that. This is pretty bad. This is pretty bad. These are very directly, very ad vibes, right? Like, I'm not getting any human. Um, but maybe Ema could, could change her mind. Ema has been collaborating with a little bit fancier brands like Coach and Door and Nike. Um, she's the first AI influencer in Japan. Her social media pages feature her exploring Tokyo. Um, so let's see some of her appearances. It doesn't look like she has a big social media influence. It just looks like she has an Instagram, though. Is that a little Nas? Okay. Oh, she was in this one. Is that her? Oh, my God, it is. I didn't realize that was AI, dude. Okay. For sure. Astral body. This looks very weird. <gasps> what? Astral body. Are these real products or is it a scam? It looks like Teddy Fresh. I don't know. This one looks way doper, way more culturally like reflective of, of society. But again, feels bad, man. Um, this one looks like a Fortnite character. Noonery. Noonery. The first virtual influencer to get a deal with Warner Music. Dude, you don't get a deal with Warner Music. Warner Music creates you. You know what I mean? That's that's how that works. <laughs> All right. So this article um, that we kind of went down a rabbit hole in. She kind of looks like Ariana Grande. Let's listen to some music. Can they DMCA me? Like Tommy, Tommy knows. Okay, it's kind of a banger. It's kind of, it's kind of a banger. Um. All right. All right. Shudu. Okay. This is the one of the controversial ones as well. Um, the first the digital supermodel, okay, worked with brands like Louis Vuitton. That's man. She's got only two hundred and forty one, so maybe she's she's a new. One. She was created in two thousand seventeen. You know, some of these AI influencers are extremely old. Not like you know they're four years old or whatever, but like you know what I'm saying. As far as technology goes, a lot of us weren't really cognizant of AI. Um, being, you know, used in consumer products until I would say about 2021, uh, became more mainstream. All right. This one's kind of freaky, dude. This is, I'm going to butcher this. Not like she cares. Um, Etana Lopez, <laughs> this AI model actually is a model for places like Victoria's Secret and Guess, um, and was created only last year. So we have a newer She's a Scorpio. She's out here. Yeah, she just looks like really real. Um, she looks like she lives in LA. She's a strong, determined woman, independent in her actions. I don't know if I want my AI to be independent in their their actions. <laughs> Maybe we keep we keep control of their actions for a bit. That would make me feel a bit better as we're exploring this this human influencer versus AI influencer space. Do you know what I mean? It all seems. Bleh. Anyway, will AI influencers replace human influencers? Like them or not, AI influencers are probably here to stay. Um, we are going to be seeing them more so, and I agree with that sentiment. But the article does conclude with saying, although, you know, AI can be good at mimicking human emotion, humor and creativity, artificial, intel artil <laughs> artificial intelligence is not sentient, and it cannot connect or relate to people the way a real person can. Um, I've been watching Fallout like the rest of the world, and there was that robot Snip Snip. And um, that was a really good example of how I think people romanticize AI in sort of a sentient body, if you will. So in, in Fallout, you know, Snip Snip was like, hey, how are you doing? Um, and, and kind of being kind to this person who has been traveling. 
um, in, in experiencing a hard time. And it was one of the first people who has sort of treated her with dignity and respect. And, and, and at some point, you can kind of see the glimmer in her eyes like, oh, my God, dignity is back. You know, meritocracy is back. Um, and then at one point, <laughs> the lady goes, so snip snip, um, why are you so nice to me? I thought I was here, you know, to be trafficked. And, and, and to which snip snip replies, no, I'm simply here to harvest your organs. And he says it with such a, like, <gasps> positive tone. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what the future holds for AI influencers and content creators. Um, but I don't want snip snips. You know what I mean? Like, I want to control <laughs> the AI. Um, and I don't want it to be autonomous like that. So. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below because it's here, right? It's here to stay. Uh, what should we be thinking about this like, right? Like, how should we be thinking about AI influencers? Should we be thinking about it like future coexistence? Should we be thinking about it like a literal tool that we can leverage? Um, or, or are these just fellow netizens that we should expect to be co-mingling with often um, on the internet? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm V, um, and this was a fun little article, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of tear it apart and go through it with you guys just to see what people are saying and, and explore a little bit about where AI influencers sit currently in the online zeitgeist. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did, like and subscribe to the channel for more.